Carp. It's just went hunting up in North Texas on a property I hadn't been to in about a week. Hadn't checked the game cameras, but when I pulled in, I saw this pig running from the feeder area down into the woods. So I got set up on the hillside a little higher up than I normally set and waited for it to come back. The sun went down and about an hour and a half later the pig came back, came through, and then ran off. I had no idea why. So I'm thinking it's just going to circle around. Something spooked that it's just going to come back and feed. And then I spied the cattle with my eye or Hunter Mark III. Optics provided by Third Coast Thermal. And they had come in to chase away the pig. I couldn't believe it. Well, I kept waiting, and a little while later, the pig showed up again. He's entered into the feeding area. Now I'm just waiting for a good shot, so I'll go ahead and nuke the image. And here I've sped up the video to get past the slow parts. He kept his butt presented to me for the longest time. But eventually he had to turn. Which he does here. And down he goes with a shot to the head. As I came up to the fence... He looked like a decent sized hog. Brass Catcher by Tactical Brass Recovery. So he came in right at 180 pounds and while I was taking pictures, the cattle showed up again. The 140 grain Nosler Boattail Hollow Point from Custom Reloads of Dallas penetrated completely through the skull, entering below the right ear and exiting out the low left hand side of the cheek, taking part of the brain with it as it went. Not wanting to pass up an opportunity to use this good sized hog for ballistic testing, I dragged it to the other side of the property away from the cattle and got it set up at 100 yards. I'm not really that enamored with using carcasses for ballistic testing because they don't show, show wound channels very well, but they do provide some information. So I put two shots into it. As the hog was dead when I shot it, I had to skin it in order to see the wound channels. The first shot went through the shoulder blade. And here I'm peeling back the shoulder blade to look for the wound channels. The first one I can find is that I'm putting my finger in there, feeling the damage done to the vertebral column. I can't find the second one, so I'm taking off the back strap where I'm able to find the second wound channel. There we go. The other bullet came through right here. So here's a picture of the two wound channels. You can see the first bullet actually had a larger wound channel going through it. It actually penetrated deeper to get to that point. And here I'm finding fragments of the bullets on the other side. Doesn't look like the bullets exited at this point, but later I find out that the cores of both bullets did exit the pig. Here's where the first shot came through. Bullets obviously opened up. Here's where the second shot's come through, also obviously opened up. At this point I'm recovering fragments from the muscle and from the shield, and I eventually discovered that both bullets had punched through with their cores. So with the shot going through the shoulder, only 33.4 grains of bullet were recovered with 10 to 12 inches of penetration all the way through the animal, penetrated the shield, the scapula, started to open, penetrated the thoracic vertebra, which would have crippled the animal, and then continued through, exiting out the other side leaving some fragments behind. The second shot further back had less hog to go through, penetrating only 8 to 10 inches before exiting, leaving behind 11.7 grains of bullet. The bullet did not start to open up until it entered the back strap, then it went through the neural arch of the spine, continuing through before exiting out the other side. Carpe sus, my friends.